Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Face World Media. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. In this video, I want to talk about the Zoom alternatives, including Zoom. So what are they? Let's see. We have a Zoom, we have Google Meet, which is previously Google Hangout. Then we have Microsoft Team, and then we have Cisco WebEx. So the four apps I talked about are the most popular or most dominant forces in the market today. And Zoom is something that everybody has heard of. So what I'm gonna do in this video is to give you my honest opinion uh, of how well I think they work, uh, ease of use, um, price by the way is kind of all very comparable. Uh, even Microsoft and Cisco are now coming out with versions that everybody can accept. So it's no longer a an exclusive enterprise solution. Hey, before we get started today, this video is sponsored by Restream. Restream allows you to be everywhere and stream your content right on 30 plus social media platforms. Thank you guys for watching and let's go back to today's video. With that said, I thought this video could be really interesting because I've read a lot of articles on, you know, PC Magazine and all that. And I find that most of those articles are trying to be very politically correct. And even though those articles are not trying to necessarily favor one company over the other, but I think they're trying to walk a really fine line to not piss anybody off. Also, to be completely fair, technology changes constantly. Uh, for example, I used to absolutely hate using Microsoft Team and Cisco WebEx. Whenever I get one of those links, it's always from a company, sometimes a very stuffy company, and I expect the link to not work. But hey, since the pandemic, especially I would say since March, April this year, I see these companies to really step up their games in terms of usability, pricing features, and I see more empathy in general. So they do work. However, uh, in this video, I wanna really talk to you guys about how you can choose, uh, who knows, maybe, where you need to pivot to in case Zoom stops working. Now, as a digital marketer by trade, and it's the nature of my business, I have clients in multiple industries. I have several clients on retainers. I have a YouTube channel. So that it's really important for me to make sure that a Zoom works, but I need a backup plan just in case. Plus, uh, it's really important for me to be well versed in the world of virtual meetings and all my clients or, you know, might choose to use different things in a way I need to adapt to what they're comfortable with. It's not always my call. Uh, so with that said, number one, which is Zoom, this channel has a lot of Zoom videos um, that is not by accident because Zoom has made it really consumer friendly, whether you're an educator or where this is a family gathering for Thanksgiving, Christmas, anybody can use it. And the ease of use really is what Zoom has been thriving on. And months ago, there were issues with Zoom bombing. We had a separate video on that too. Uh, but since then, Zoom has implemented a lot of uh, security features. Um, now, in general, when you look at Zoom and how it pivoted from really supporting primarily corporations to all of a sudden consumers, um, sort of B2Cs, and you know the development process really changes and it's not without faults. So if for ease of use and if you're just getting started and if everybody in your world are already using Zoom, I would say it's safe to stick with Zoom. My personal preference for Zoom is also that it makes people look pretty good. Now, this is a really strange part that Zoom does make people look better. For my meetings, I try to turn on uh, touch up just a little bit around like 20% or so because I realize that in general, Zoom makes it pretty natural. So it's not trying to completely mask your face, even at 100%, but I tend to just like do a little bit so it looks natural. I also like the new feature, which we have produced a video for as well, adjust background lights. A lot of us can be uh, hosting meetings in a room without a lot of natural lights. And I understand that not everybody is a YouTuber or a video content creator. So you won't have ring lights and all these external lights near you. So um, yeah, having these features are really important. Yet I don't see Google or Microsoft or Cisco having those features. And what I dislike the most about these three competitors, uh, I would say is 
the inability to really um, make the videos look decent or good, uh, especially the one that you're looking at, for example, still on Google Meet today, that not only that there's no touch up, the lighting is a little bit poor and you can see yourself and also, uh, you know, your attendees just not really looking their best. I know we're all tired and um, a little bit stressed out these days. So that I would say is definitely a pro for Zoom. Now let's talk about Google Meet. So that is gonna be your second runner up. It's something that you do not wanna neglect or not pay attention to. Not only it's a great backup, Google Meet also comes with a free version. Google Meet used to be called Google Hangout and it's something that I didn't really pay a lot of attention to because for my client meetings at the time already since 2017, I've been using Zoom. The benefits is that let's not forget Google is the biggest search engine in the world and it comes with Gmail, uh, Google Suite or G Suite. So there are a lot of features that you can neglect. Google has the most dominant, uh, I would say, ecosystem. Uh, so Google Calendar, again, Google Drive, all these things are seamlessly integrated. So you can see that, you know, Google Meet is definitely gonna stay in the game. And I even suspect that with enough power and concentration and paying attention to the market, you know, I would say Zoom and Google Meet is gonna be neck and neck. And at some point, I think Google Meet is really gonna take off for a variety of reasons I mentioned previously. Now let's talk about Microsoft Team. More than 90 companies out of the 100 uh, fortune companies in the US are using Microsoft Team. It sounds to me like an exaggeration, but then again, I am also not entirely surprised. So Microsoft Team, from what I have learned, I have used, which is very limited, I would say during the uh, pandemic in 2020, I probably have used Microsoft Teams just a few times max. Now I have a lot of clients who are senior executives who have to use Team regularly. They don't always love it, not because it doesn't work, but it's because it has all these features, including security features and creating teams and groups and therefore complicates permission. So definitely if it's a family event or if you're an educator dealing with kids and families in general, I think Microsoft team most likely will be an overkill unless there's a specific feature that enables you to do what you do. So I would say team is there for a reason. I think big companies love it because it checks off so many boxes. For me, I do anticipate that to be a route I'll be going down on uh, you know, as a creative entrepreneur anytime soon. Now, lastly, it, Cisco WebEx. Now, I personally had terrible experiences with WebEx in the past, I would say five to 10 years. So they've been around for a long time. I remember it not work most of the time. And it's not a surprise. Now it works. They redesigned the landing page. And for the most part, it looks, you know, really enterprise level, really slick. Um, but uh, I've used uh, um, Cisco WebEx for a number of uh, virtual events and generally it runs. Uh, but I would say that in my experience has always be uh, with WebEx associated with very, very professional interactions and, um, you know, it just doesn't really have the same look and feel compared to Zoom. Zoom to me is very, very end user driven. It doesn't look or feel like corporate at all. Uh, with that said, I would say, you know, based on what I have experienced team and WebEx or Microsoft and Cisco are very comparable in a way, whereas I would put Zoom and Google Meet in their own category. I'm more targeted at consumers. Uh, they don't cost very much. Again, now there are free versions that many of us can take advantage of as well. So perhaps, you know, if you are someone who need to consider both solutions, maybe one that you're using uh, that is Team or WebEx, but you also have another solution, Zoom or Google and or Google Meet available as well. And that's the crazy part, guys. I know so many people, including myself, who have all of these four plus apps installed on my computer, on my computer, main computer, as well as my laptop. And here's another tricky part is when you have all of these virtual meeting apps on your computer, I feel like it just gets complicated. And that means, by the way, here's my final tip is that you have to sometimes restart your machine, making sure that all four or five apps are up to date, that you install the updates religiously, regularly. I noticed personally for me, when I have all of these apps installed, uh, the microphone, the sound systems are kind of competing with one another and sometimes it gets confused. Uh, I have a client also uh, with Microsoft 
and Cisco installed sometimes it makes his Zoom app not work. So these are the things to pay attention to. One more thing I'd like to mention is GoToMeeting. That's in a really interesting spot. I would put GoToMeeting right in the middle. Uh, in between the consumer stuff like the Zoom and the Google Meet and also the other side, which is the Microsoft and Cisco's. And the reason for that is I actually really enjoy using GoToMeeting back in 2016 and 17. I really liked it. It was really easy to share a screen. Plus, here's the thing. I never really used the GoToMeeting for um, kind of showing my face or these virtual meetings with camera turned on. And instead, it was very effective for us to share a PowerPoint presentations or documents from Google Drive. But I noticed right now I use GoToMeeting exclusively for just one meeting. And that can be pretty annoying. Now, um, GoToMeeting is fairly strong when it comes to getting the transcription and you know ease of use. People seem to like it, especially from the administrative end of things. Personally, I got to say that some of the things just don't work. For example, there's no touch up, you know, adjusting backlights, but also audio has constantly been an issue and sometimes videos as well. So I remember my last meeting on GoToMeeting just one week prior, um, there were only four people uh, in that meeting. And literally, you know, I have a high speed internet at home. I have professional microphones I was not able to connect to. And my microphone's connected to an audio interface. It did not work. It actually never worked no matter what. I restarted the interface, won't work. Uh, this I've never really experienced within Zoom. And halfway through the meeting, uh, two of my colleagues dropped out. Uh, one froze, the other you know, had video issues. So what we decided to do, here's the thing, is I then sent my Zoom link out, everybody hopped back on and nobody had any issues. So you know, when something like that happens, it's really hard to say, let's just be patient because the reality is if you're in a professional meeting, in my case, the meeting was paid for, it was a therapy session for all of us, then every second really counts, right? Um, you know, if you have to kind of juggle between the apps, you're losing five, 10, 15 minutes from your existing meeting. So I, I do think it's really, really important for us to, you know, really cut ourselves some slack and understand one another, but then really choose the app that is reliable and that's designed and that works for what we're trying to do. So I hope you find this video helpful. I really wanted to talk through these things. Uh, this came highly requested and I realized it's true. It's a really good question that I haven't spent enough time really processing and summarizing and I hope you learn some things and be share this video with another friend or colleague. Again, this is Fei Wu and you're watching Face World Media. I love my life as a creative entrepreneur and I'm trying to do everything within my power, you know, Zoom, virtual hangouts, meetings, live streaming, and later on we might explore content in, you know, Squarespace and how to build an ecosystem like that triangle to get your ideas, your vision out there, build a business around your stories, be proud of it, and to be able to celebrate your life uh, creatively and financially as well. So. Uh, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do. I would love to see you in a future video. So much love and bye for now.